You know, the problem I had with a guy like Kendrick Perkins is that ever since he's became part of the media, he has grossly violated the code that is a part of the NBA brotherhood. I mean, this guy has told secrets that should not have been told. Um, things that happened in the locker room that should have stayed in the locker room. Um, and you go from that to giving outlandish takes on TV. Now, in the latest rendition of Kendrick Perkins' verbal diarrhea of the mouth, he talks about how LeBron's teammates are trash. And before any one um, tries to defend that. I'm going to play this clip fair use and I'm going to provide more commentary on the other side. DJ, spin that shit. You, you, you know what that is, Uncle? Uh? No. You know what that is? You what? know what that is, Molly? It's the old saying. You can sm- Now, before uh, I continue on, I, when he did that, that looked like a rendition of how Rottweiler would do when he smells a piece of beef or he smells a raw piece of chicken, right? But let's continue on. I'm going to play more of this clip. It's going to start over again. And then we'll, I'll, I'll give the real commentary. You, you, you know what that is, huh? No. You know what that is? You what? know what that is, Molly? It's the old saying. You can smell doo-doo before you see it. We've been smelling <laughs> doo-doo the whole season long when it comes down to the Lakers. Like, they, they sitting in a nice spot. So, what are we talking about? First of all, they got to get into the postseason. That's number one. So, when I'm, looking at the, when I'm looking at the Clippers, when I'm looking at the Clippers, it's a bigger deal because of the expectations. LeBron James don't even have expectations for this Lakers team. He knows that they trash. He knows that they can't make any noise. That's why you, along with LeBron, was the reason, was one of the ones at the trade deadline, including myself, saying trade. Get you another star in there. Get you a wing defender. Because we all know if they happen to get up against the Sacramento Kings, we know how the Sacramento Kings own them. We know how Sabonis owns AD in that matchup. And then if they happen to get to that next round or play against a a Dallas Mavericks in the play-in tournament, you sure you want to go on the road and play against a Luka Doncic or a Kyrie Irving the way that they've been falling? Okay, so this is the thing. Right? This is the thing. The Lakers have proven this season that they can beat elite teams. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks are one of the elite teams in the NBA. They've beaten Milwaukee both times this season. And if I'm not mistaken, LeBron James didn't play in either one of those games. LeBron and AD did not play in the game against the Boston Celtics when they went to Boston and beat the Boston Celtics, right? So you got to make it make sense. Kendrick Perkins, you got to make it make sense, man. So one minute, this team is trash. This team is doo-doo. You out here putting on, you know, two-legged Rottweiler takes on TV. Basically simulating what a uh, Rottweiler would smell, if it smells food and all that. And then the next minute, they go on a run. No, 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 hold on, because there's other things I'm leaving out conveniently or inconveniently. Let's talk about what happened early in the season when the Lakers won the in-season tournament and he was running around on TV talking about, oh, this team could go all the way. This, that, and the third, bibbity bobbity boo. The Lakers go on a loser streak, right? Not only they go on a loser streak, they go on a, a on a massive slump. Who was one of the ones that was running his mouth on TV, advocating for D-Lo to get traded, Darvin Ham to be fired? This that he's out here gossiping like a little bitch on TV, talking about, oh man, oh 
you know, there's so much turmoil in the Lakers locker room and all this other stuff. It was this guy, along with his other, you know, stupid ass media handlers or whatever like that. Kendrick Perk was one of the ones that was out here banging the drum for Darvin Hand to be fired. And there was a lot of dimwits out here that was running his mouth, echoing Kendrick Perkins' talking points about Darvin Hand being fired. Who was one of the ones out here that was saying, no, Darvin Hand should not be fired? I was the one that was on that hill. I was the one that was defending um, Darvin Ham, and I got backlash for it. Which goes to show you that a lot of stupid ass motherfuckers out here don't know what the hell they talking about when they talk. Oh man, Kendrick Perkins rotations. The average basketball person, not the, I'm, I'm talking about people who played in the NBA. I'm talking about the average fanboy who watches game on TV. Don't know what a rotation consists of. There's a lot of Factors you have to take into account when a coach is inserting a player into the game. He's not just sitting up there randomly. Hey, hey man, yeah, you get up in there. Oh, man, kid, uh, Dovahan's rotation is trash. Uh, Dovahan needs to do better job of his rotations. That's the kind of shit that people like Kendrick Perkins are putting out there. And then you got these dimwits out here who don't know no fucking basketball. Running that, running with that bullshit. Don't even know what they're looking at in a, in a basketball game. Oh man, can't you put the rotation to trash? Oh, oh, double hand rotation to trash. That's the kind of stuff that was being perpetuated by Kendrick Perkins. When the Lakers was going in their losing streak or they lost a game, they had no business losing, whatever like that, in large part to LeBron James. But when we call this up, we we being a bunch of haters, right? And that's how you know that they, these people out here who say stuff like this don't got nothing. That That's the tried and true default response to somebody calling out LeBron for his buffoonery. Oh, man, you just out here being a hater, man. Why are you out here bringing, why are you out here bringing the black man down, man? We're, we're pop, pop. So what the fuck is this shit? When Kendrick Perkins out here bashing on AD. LeBron can sit up here and talk shit about all kinds of other um, black folks and all that, and he bringing them down? Ain't that bringing a black man down? So all you power to the people, part-time, hotep, Jesus motherfuckers, the fuck out of here. Because your ass ain't no way to be found when it comes to the real issue. But when it comes to Kendrick Perkins... If the Lakers go on a loser streak, players need to be traded. Darvin Ham needs to be fired, whatever the case may be. He's out here singing to the high heavens about Jeannie Buss not doing her job, this, that, and the third. But when they win, when they win, then it's all him. It's all LeBron because LeBron have got the teammates. Now, the teammates has proven that they can go out there and win games without him. They've proven that. They've gone to hostile territory and won games without LeBron. Yeah, I know the Lakers won last night in double overtime. But let Kendrick Perkins tell it, this team is trash. It can't go nowhere. Really, the only team I'm worried about in the Western Conference is Denver Nuggets. That's really the only team I'm worried about in the West. All these other teams, the Lakers can take Minnesota because they don't got cat. The Lakers can take the Phoenix Suns. The Lakers can take Golden State. The Lakers can take...
the uh um oh shit Oklahoma City. Really, the only team I'm worried about in the Western Conference is the Denver Nuggets. The Lakers can take the Clippers. Like I said, the only team I'm really concerned with in the Western Conference is the Denver Nuggets. It's the only team I'm really concerned about. And the only reason I'm concerned about the Denver Nuggets is because of Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray has been a notorious thorn in the Lakers' backside. The Denver Nuggets has won eight games in a row against the L.A. Lakers. You go back to the Western Conference Finals, or probably even before that, Jamal Murray has been a thorn in the Lakers' backside. Now, mind you, the Lakers tried to trade for Jamal Murray at one point. When Jamal Murray had his um, torn ACL, when he was out that year with the torn ACL, the Lakers tried to trade for Jamal Murray. But nobody in the media is going to tell you that. So this whole Jekyll and Hyde takes that Kendrick Perkins be on, on TV, man. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times he's on control opposition anyway. He's control opposition. One minute he's, you know, dick licking LeBron, and then the next minute he's trying to trash LeBron and all that. He's control opposition. So you this control opposition where, you know, you're like a part-time criticizer of him and all that, man, I see through the scan, Okay. I see through the scan. And then he's sitting up there calling other players trash like he was some certified Hall of Famer. It's beyond laughable. It's beyond laughable. That's the gross hypocrisy above all else. Now, mind you, when he was on the New Orleans Pelicans, he was rated one of the 10 worst players. Because <laughs> I did a video with Two Raw for TV about this a few years ago. Shout out to Two Raw for TV, right? Me and Two Raw, <laughs> we did a video years ago, and we, it's called Kendrick Perkins is a Scrub, Then, Now, Forever. Oh, man, that was a great video. I, that video, I think that video is still up. We did that video back in 2020. And we talked about how garbage this man was. But for him to sit up there and call it other players trash, one, you're violating the bro code in the NBA. And two, you even know Hall of Famer. Where's Kendrick Perkins' accolades? Where's Kendrick Perkins' accolades? Has he ever won defensive player of the year? No, but I've seen him getting dunked on by Blake Griffin, though. No. <laughs> So, you would think for a guy who's been in the NBA, and this guy was a McDonald's All-American. Kendrick Perkins was. Yes, you would not, if you did it like know your history or whatever like that, you would not have known that this man was a McDonald's All-American just like LeBron James was. Coming out of high school, out of Beaumont, Texas. He was drafted in the same draft cast as LeBron James. But you don't see no rim rocking dunks or no game saving blocks when you look at Kendrick Perkins' video montage. You don't see no tribute video whenever he goes back to the TD Garden for Kendrick Perkins. Hell, when you when they bring up his name, and you know, nowadays what they do, 
is whenever they bring a guy on TV or a girl on TV, they list all the accolades and accomplishments and, and the credentials. Kendrick Perkins don't have this robust list of credentials to go off of that makes him credible, whatever like that. He's nothing more than a pom-pom shaker. And he's a shameless one at that. Kendrick Perkins' video package consists of him waving his towel coming off the bench or him being in the wrong end of the highlight. Whether him, you know, trying to, you know, dribble some ball up the court and he had a tragic Bronson alert or him getting dunked on by someone, whether it be Blake Griffin or Pagasaw or whoever, or he just waving his towel coming off the bench. Yeah, good shot, good shot, boy. Or him sitting down talking with, about whatever with whoever. Wearing some plaid outfit. That's Kendrick Perkins' video montage. But he's sitting up here on TV with outside that goddamn um, Jezebel, Malika Andrews, talking shit about players and all that, talking about how they're trash and all that. And then he always running his mouth about KD. He always runs his mouth by KD. Now, mind you, KD and Kendrick Perkins were teammates on that OKC team that went to the NBA Finals that one year. Who did not show up on OKC as a big man? Who didn't show up? Who's still playing and who's not? So that whole thing with Kendrick Perkins, man, he is a clown and a buffoon. He's a buffoon. That's why I don't put no respect on Kendrick Perkins' name. I don't put no respect on his name because it's, it's these Jekyll and Hyde takes that he always come up with consistently throughout the season and not just this season you can rewind the tape and go back years ever since he started working for ESPN he's been doing all this outlandish stuff now watch watch what I tell you later on the day because first take later on the uh, as of this recording, March 27th, right? Happy, heavenly birthday to my granddaddy. You know, I love you. And uh, I will see you at some point on the other side. Just not right now. But happy, heavenly birthday to my granddaddy. Now, the Lakers beat the Bucks last night. That's for one. And that's... And basically, the Lakers swept the season series from Milwaukee. Both games, LeBron did James did not play in either one of those games. I want to see Kendrick Perkins keep that same energy. The same players he's calling trash and all that, right? I want him to keep the same energy about that. But you know he's not. You know he's not. Watch he starts pop palm shaking on first take at some point later on if he's on first take today. Watch he start all that pom pom shaking. Watch he do the complete 180 from what he said not even 24 hours ago, talk about how the team's trash and you know, even LeBron don't even have expectations for this team. What do you mean we don't got expectations? You don't a Los Angeles Lakers uniform. This expectation to win the championship every year. Now, obviously, that that isn't the 
that's not going to happen every year, but it still doesn't change that the expectations is still there for this team to compete for a championship. This team is good enough to compete for a championship. They have the talent. So this notion that, oh, well, uh, this team isn't good enough. I mean, LeBron even have no expectations for him. The fuck out of here, Kendrick Perkins. You, oh, Lord have mercy. I ain't even supposed to be, I'm not even supposed to be going off like this considering my, my health condition. I'm not even supposed to be going off like this. But this kind of misconduct that's going on in the media is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And channels like myself and Two Raw and Ticket and uh, and others, we are out here trying to tell you what's going on, but yet our views get suppressed. Our channels get shadow banned. We get put on the back burner. The system that's put in place is already rigged against us. Because we're the ones out here trying to tell you the truth. We don't have no dog in this fight. We don't got no horse in this race. So who's more biased here? We, the people who are so-called haters, right? Who's calling out this buffoonery that's that's um, telling you that what they're saying is nonsense? Or the people who actually have a vested interest in the success of LeBron James. And more often than not, it's from a monetary standpoint because there's some kind of benefit to them on the back end. Whether it be a book deal, whether it be an interview, whatever. So, there's a clear lack of journalistic integrity here. And it's like, he just sticks his finger in his mouth, take that same dirty-ass finger he had in his mouth, put it up to the sky to see where the wind blow, and that's the direction Kendrick Perkins goes. Brian Winhorsey, another one. And it's just this raw, unadulterated buffoonery that we're subjected to on the daily basis. That's why I stopped watching shows like First Take and NBA Today and all that. They really got this ass clown in prominent roles. They got this ass clown in prominent roles. He's on the pregame shows. He's on the halftime shows. Spitting his little verbal diary of the mouth. It's disgusting, man. He's sitting there talking shit about his contemporaries and all that, like he was some bona fide Hall of Famer. This motherfucker couldn't even get in the Hall of Fame in the Bay 3 League. He right up there with the Ryan Hollins. But somehow, this two-legged Rottweiler can sit on TV and sniff like he's sniffing for a raw piece of beef or or, or out there um, running around here like he's some attack dog against everybody else who calls out LeBron. Just, oh, this guy pissed me off so bad. You just don't have no idea. This guy pisses me off so bad with his outlandish takes consistently over and over and over again. And then the one time he, be, one or two times he becomes critical of LeBron James, I'm supposed to be, oh, man, Kendrick Perkins. Oh, my God, he's new. Where did he get this from? The fuck out of here, <laughs> 
There's no way. You can throw me off that set. He's clearly on the payroll. And I wouldn't be surprised if he had a vote for MVP. Well, we all know where that vote's going. We all know where that vote is going. Then on top of that, it, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about LeBron's politicking in the background. His politicking in the background, the classic case of throwing the rocks and hiding your hand, where, hey, I, I don't have nothing to do with the roster. You're you going to talk to upper level management. But don't you got influence of who comes in and out of that team? So how can you sit up there be in the background trying to make all these demands and then be in the forefront? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to talk to Rob Palenka. Who does not see that? Hell, Stevie Wonder can see that shit. But Kendrick Perkins ain't going to call that out, though. Then when he don't get then when he don't win MVP, he wanna put these goddamn cryptic messages about, oh well, you know, I gotta make sure my circle, gotta keep my circle small and low. The fuck out of here, man. Kendra Perkins ain't gonna call that bullshit out. Don't worry, I will. Shit. I know Ticket will Ticket call that bullshit out, and I know Two Raw call that bullshit out too. Kendra Perkins is a bam. Let's just call it for what it is. He's a fucking bammer. You guys let me know what y'all think about this, man. Straight up, man. You know how to subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share these videos on your social media platforms. And when the M we got two weeks left, I say about two and a half weeks left in the NBA season. We got two and a half weeks left in the NBA season. And now you're starting to hear a lot more talk about who's going to be MVP, what teams are going to make the playoffs, what team could possibly miss the playoffs, what team could possibly enter the play-in game. That talk is going to – is like entering its fever pitch now. Because we got two and a half weeks left in the regular season. And in the West, especially in the West, each game is crucial from here on out. You got the Rockets, who I said before the season began. I know a lot of people are going to try to take credit for it, but I was one of the ones who said that the Houston Rockets was going to make the playoffs before the season began. The video's still up. If you don't believe me, go back and to the video I did in October about that. I was one of the I was the I was probably one of the only people that said the Rockets was gonna make the playoffs. And for those of you that you know might be questioning that, I mean a lot of the takes I've made has came to pass. I have the credibility. I just don't sit up here and toot my own horn every chance I get. But at the same time, I have the credibility because a lot of the stuff I've said has came to pass. Last year, when the Sacramento came before the season began, I was one of the ones that said that the Kings were going to make the playoffs. I didn't think they was going to be as good as they were being the third seed. I ain't go that far, but I did say they was going to make the playoffs. Whether it be a team making the playoffs, a coach is going to get fired, right? Or, by the way, as far as a coach getting fired, Steve Clifford for the Charlotte Hornets, yeah, he up out of there. Y'all heard it here first. Steve Clifford for the Charlotte Hornets is going to get fired. May not do it now, but after when the season's over with, yeah, Steve Clifford, he's out of there. He's out of there. 
there's going to be a whole destroy and rebuild in Charlotte. And if your name's not LaMelo Ball or Miles Bridges and uh, or uh, Brandon Miller, you're pretty much on the chopping block. That's right. That is one team that's going that's going to that's going to go through a wholesale change in the NBA. Uh, man, I, I, and I'll talk more about that in another video. But yeah, let's just keep this a hundred. LeBron James is what's going on. He is the problem. Nobody else. Okay, what's up, Buki Allen? Salute to you, man. Long time no see. Good to see you. For real. He's the problem. Who can't see that? Huh? If Are you that much of a come guzzling dick like that? You can't see what the fuck's going on, man? Huh? All you guys out there that be out there swallowing LeBron James' and spit. Y'all can't see what's going on? This dude's the fucking problem, man. Woosah. Woosah. Hit that like, hit the subscribe, and ring that notification bell. That way, you be, you will know when I go live, man. It's very important that you ring that notification bell. And it's very important that you share the content. YouTube is really trying to put the screws to me. They're trying to pin my back against the wall when it comes to me putting out this content. That way you don't see it. So please support the channel. So that way we can get the real truth out here. Not, not this nonsense that you no know, corporate media is trying to push. Because see, corporate media is in the business of mind control. They keep copper bombing you with the same thing over and over again. To make it to make a lie look like it's true. So I have the backing of the people. I have no ulterior motives here. My job is to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Not the biased truth, not the liar's truth, but the highest truth. Anybody that goes against that, then you don't like the truth. You just like being fed your red meat. You just like being fed your um cocaine to get high off. And then that's that. Everything else is irrelevant. So as long as you get your high, as long as, we, as long as it fits your narrative, then it's all good in the neighborhood. It ain't going down like that over here. So that so if you're looking for that high, you looking for that uh, you know, you're looking for that red meat you want to be fed, then you gotta go somewhere else. Cause this ain't for you. And my channel's not for everybody. It, it is what it is. Cause as far as I'm concerned, if you rock with me, all right, let's do this together. Because I'm not the end all be all. We are brother and the sisterhood right here. I'm no different. I'm not more high and mighty than anybody else. If you don't rock with me, though, fuck you. And that's how it's going to be. Shouts out to the LDBC. This your man. Scream at me. Hurt.